absolutely necessary in order to make this thing work. And that allows you to get a product out the door that's inexpensive. And then you get to see people use your work and do constructive things like smash cars. So basically, of course, this is the cool thing we, we just introduced here. And that is we now support mobile as well as um, um, PCs, Macs, and TV. But we're also very practical. We, we make it clear to people, and you'll see it in my blog post I did today, that mobile is really, really good for certain things, but you can't expect it to be as good as a, you know, a big TV or big computer screen when you've got 150 milliseconds of latency and a small you know, thumb uh, touch thing. Okay, so uh, then, um, yeah, okay, this is why um, it's good, online is a good idea. From, uh, it's time to move on from packaged goods. I mean, in a few years, anything with a disc is going to look really old. And so, but video games have been the last thing that have, been, uh, have, have switched over because of this huge download problem. You can start a movie or start an, a, an audio track right at the beginning of, you know, when you connect, but you can't start a video game in the middle. You have to download the whole thing. So uh, here's the economics. Yeah, right. Okay. So uh, uh, the one thing to note here is that we're, how, how can we go and build millions of servers? Well, we lease the servers, actually. So we, we don't actually have to buy all these servers. If you're Microsoft or, or Nintendo or Sony, you've got to buy every one of those boxes that goes in someone's home. As a startup company, that's impossible. So we said, OK, let's go put all the big costs in the data center, because we can lease data servers. And then our monthly cost for leasing these things is less than the revenue comes in. We can build as many as we want. Off you go. So, um, and we did a lot of optimization for scale. So here's, off, here's a key thing to notice at the bottom here. Very often, non-intuitive configurations lead, yield the overall, lowest overall cost. I mean, one of the obvious things you might think of is you should just virtualize each of these game sessions across the servers. Well, be careful. It depends on what the cost of it is. Like those GPUs, those big NVIDIA and AMD G G GPUs are not optimized for power. Okay, they, they figure they're going to be in someone's Alienware machine or something like that, and they're plugging in. They just want maximum performance. So power is, is actually cost significant dollars in a data center. It has to be, because cooling has to go along with the power, right? So whatever power goes into a computer, a server in a data center, you have to double it because you have to pay for the air conditioning to cool it, right? So we realized that a lot of these games do not need a GPU at all. Instead, they could run on a CPU. Like uh, things like uh, World of Goo, it's a 2D game. Why run it on a GPU? And lots of other things we move over and find different ways to have different cost processors. And then we have software that optimizes it. We do other things where we optimize for network bandwidth and peak usage. Peak users are evenings and weekends for, uh, for games. And, um, but it, it follows the sun as it goes across the country. And if you happen to be between one of our data centers in Chicago and the one in uh, Santa Clara, or between the one we have in Virginia and Chicago, what we can do is choose which data center to put you on based on what we expect to be the amount of time you're going to play and where the peak is going to end sooner. All these things are ways to, you know, are on a macroscopic level, reduce our costs. Um, and this goes and shows, again, this is not a, a business school class, but I want to uh, show you why OnLive is so compelling. How's a, how's a startup company? It's the first time in history a startup company has talked virtually all of the top game company, publishers to go and make their games available the same date they're in store in stores uh, uh, for us. Well, the way they, we pulled it off is by showing them this slide. Basically, a video game that sells for $60 the retailer, you know, Best Buy, will uh, get $15 for their margin. And then the publisher has to allocate $7 for returns. If someone returns a game, the publishers take it back for uh, what's called price protection. If they lower the price, the publisher has to pay the retail store. And then market, marketing development funds, MDF, that flyer that comes in the newspaper, you, you, oh, you guys don't know about this thing. There was this thing that was on paper that they printed. It was called a newspaper, OK? <laughs> your, your parents will tell you about it, OK? Yeah, but we used to read these things. All right, anyways. So, and on Sunday, they'd have these flyers that go with the retail stores. Okay, so that's what the MDF fund's for. Then there's distribution and cost of goods sold, COGS. You'll see that a lot. That's the cost of those DVDs, four bucks for that. And then there's a platform royalty that goes to Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft when you put it on their platform. But then we've got this, and then, so out of the $60, $27, less than half of it, goes to the publisher. And that's a big publisher. We, these, the other problem that's happening is used games. I know you guys don't think of that as a problem, but it is a problem for the ecosystem. And here's why. When you go to GameStop, you, uh, if you, you finish playing a game, you go to GameStop, they pay you 20 bucks for it, and then you go and buy a $40 used game, right? So GameStop makes $20 in that transaction. Well, that's fine, except for none of that money goes to the game publisher that took the risk to develop the game. None of it goes to the platform maker that took the risk to develop the game platform. So you'd say, well, geez, but yeah, but I get a lower price. But what used to happen before used games is when a game would get less popular and demand would decrease, the publisher would lower the price. 
So they were still getting a smaller margin for the tail of the life of the game. Now the tail of the game has, is almost not about almost a quarter of the sales now are going are used game sales. So that dramatic and it's getting larger. So that dramatically reduces the amount of money going into the investment in new uh, new technologies uh, for video games and new creative work for video games. So any of you guys ever want to work on any of this stuff, and that go all the way through the ecosystem, all the way to the you know the chips and so on that, that support these things. If it's getting sucked up by a store that's got a clever scheme to go and, and siphon off the money, that doesn't do you any good. So with OnLive, there are new there are no used games, right? Because the games are here, you can't pirate them. You know, and, and if a game's less popular, fine. They go and reduce the cost of it. There's no cost of goods you know, or distribution. You, know, the, uh, you talk to some, some guys in the industry, and they'll tell you that they thought a game was going to be really popular, and they printed all these DVDs. They didn't sell. They had to landfill them. I mean, literally, they just had to throw them all away. So we don't have that. If a game's not popular, fine. It just takes take him some space on a disk drive in our data center. And in fact, if they, they can go and see how people are playing the game, and maybe they can change a couple of the levels to make them more fun. So it's a very, very efficient system. And then we have piracy, which, again, piracy is a funny thing because you're not sure whether those people would have bought the games anyways. But either way, what we go into is we tell the publisher, look, take this whole red section here. That goes away. And we just do a revenue share where you get that, a bigger piece, and we get a smaller piece. OK? <laughs> and this is way bigger than this. OK? Well, it turns out that, it's, 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 it, that argument seemed to work pretty well. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, we're in, we mar announced in March, and we're in external beta now. You can go to onlive.com and sign up. And we're uh, launching winter 2009. And uh, I think that's it. OK, so yeah, so we, we already had 100,000 people sign up. We're mainly doing compatibility testing now. Just, you know, someone's got an uh, Intel processor, NVIDIA, or whatever. And then we're scaling. Uh, OK, this is the last slide. Uh, any game, anytime, anywhere, instant demos, try before you buy. You have unprecedented performance. You have community, a flexible value proposition. Demo, rent, or buy, and you never have to upgrade again. Thank you. All right. <laughs>